As the world's largest democracy decides to inaugurate a new parliament building, the emergence of the new India becomes more and more clear to you, to me and to the rest of the world. And yes, there are reasons why India's new parliament building is not only an iconic symbol of the new India, but also the most powerful symbol of democracy in the entire world. So, when I share the images and videos of India's new parliament building with people in Europe, one of the first reactions that I received was something that, to be honest, I wasn't expecting. Many people said that the design of the new Lok Sabha chamber of India's new parliament building is strikingly similar to the United Nations General Assembly Hall. What do you think? Well, take a look at this. This is the UN General Assembly Hall. This blue, green and gold General Assembly Hall, 165 feet long by 115 feet wide, with a 75-foot ceiling, is massive and definitely it looks quite imposing. Now, take a look at this. This is India's astonishing new Lok Sabha chamber. As mentioned here, the Lok Sabha Hall may accommodate up to 1,272 seats for joint sessions. Take a look at its eye-catching high ceiling, spectacular colors and striking design. Absolutely monumental. As mentioned here, it is based on a peacock theme and peacock is India's national bird. The new Rajya Sabha Hall is equally striking with a capacity of up to 384 seats and as mentioned here, it is based on a lotus theme. Lotus is India's national flower. On the other hand, as mentioned here, the General Assembly Hall is the largest room in the United Nations with a seating capacity for over 1,800 people. An overwhelming majority of people who we spoke to found India's new Lok Sabha chamber far more beautiful and aesthetically pleasing than the UN General Assembly Hall. Yes, different people may have differing views when it comes to the appearance of these two buildings, but if one digs a bit deeper, one can easily find so many differences between them. On the one hand, India's new parliament building seems to be the civilizational nation's sincere attempt to build a structure to run the world's largest democracy in the land that was raped, subjugated and looted by white European Christian colonial criminals and others who were never properly punished for their crimes. And on the other hand, in many ways, the United Nations General Assembly Hall has become a place where the colonial criminal states who looted and colonized numerous countries around the world and got richer through the misery, exploitation and enslavement of others continue to dominate, blackmail, neo-colonize or exploit many weaker nations. I mean, consider this. As described here, just five countries have dominated the United Nations and its most important body for decades. I mean, a VIP crook that consists of colonial criminal states, which were never properly punished for their crimes and now enjoy the privileged veto power while keeping India, African nations and many others out of their decision-making circles. Does this sound democratic to you? Not only that, two of those five members, China and Russia, don't even run a democracy at home. So putting those two nations aside, what is the collective population of the remaining three, the UK, the USA and France? Well, just one third of the population of India, right? But of course, these three countries are the so-called face of the democratic world in the United Nations' most important body. On the other hand, India's new parliament building is India's new democratic phase of its 1.4 billion people and in many ways, it is the new and most powerful symbol of democracy in the entire world. But why did India need a new parliament building? As described here, the present parliament house is a colonial era building that was designed as the council house and completed in 1927. When India became independent, it was converted to serve as parliament house. The present building was never designed to accommodate a bicameral legislature for a full-fledged democracy. Also, the present Parliament House is already highly stressed for various reasons, which are described here. According to India's Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, world history is replete with several examples to prove that public infrastructure projects play a key role in the revival of the economy after any pandemic. After World War II, Japan built Tokyo Tower as the world's tallest tower, which employed thousands of Japanese construction workers, instilled a greater sense of nationalism in the hearts of Japanese people and contributed to a resurgence in the Japanese economy. 
In the United States, the New Deal included more than 34,000 public works projects worth $3 billion for relief, reform and recovery from the Great Depression. Only time will tell if India's new parliament building will also be considered a landmark moment or a golden chapter in the re-emergence of the new independent India. See you again.